So on uh, April 28, 2017, uh, Blakely Elizabeth Puckett was born to us at 3.50 in the morning. And we didn't know at the time, you know, whether she was gonna make it or not. When we found out about uh, Blakely, we were in St. Louis, Missouri went into a normal checkup. The lady does the ultrasound, the tech, and we're excited because she says, it's a girl, and the uh, doctor comes in and uh, looks at us like something's up, and she said, your daughter has allobar holoprosencephaly. She said it's when the brain uh, doesn't divide properly uh, during the pregnancy, and it results in the child passing away in the womb or passing away soon after birth. We didn't really know what to do uh, in that moment, and we just wept. Why would God knit her together in the womb in such a way that she's incompatible with life? I mean, I, I was obviously heartbroken, but just like anger, angry that this plan and this idea that I had for my life and our marriage and um, you know what I had always dreamed of. Yeah, we were uh, in the hospital and all our friends came into town from all over the country and our families waiting for her to be born. We sat in the parking garage and just waited for a little bit because we knew that this was going to possibly be the end uh, and that Blakely, our little girl, would actually uh, end up passing away. We didn't bring car seats, we didn't bring clothes, we didn't bring anything because we we're expecting to go home empty-handed and... I remember when she was born, you know, they take her and they place her on Emily's chest and we just wanted her to know, like, you're loved. And, and so we, we said, I love you, I love you, I love you. And then, uh, I don't know, it felt like forever, but a few minutes or a minute later, she lets out a big scream and she starts to breathe and we get to hold her and, and and reading, we got to read her stories and sing songs with her and worship over her. We baptized her. We didn't know how long we were going to have with her. Like I was in survival mode at that point, you know, in and out of the NICU. And, but then eventually, three weeks, three and a half, four weeks later, we were like, we get to take her home. You know, we didn't even think that that was going to be possible. And As fast as possible, got her here to Citrus County and got her plugged in at All Children's in St. Petersburg, and we we started rolling. We loved that, you know, the middle of her face, there wasn't a hole in her face, but there was a heart-stamped nose. Uh, she had three lips, and we would kiss her, and uh, it was just like this extra uh, extra lip for, <laughs> for kissing, you know, so <laughs> sweet. Uh, she would have, like, these big yawns, like, real big yawns. She would sleep all the time, as if she was so tired, and every time, you know, she'd be yawning. You're like, you're not tired. You've been sleeping all day. You know, she loved her baths and, and having her hair shampooed and her head rubbed and her uh, body massaged uh, like a typical diva. Um, and then to get the privilege to hold someone who's wounded. It's a special thing to just hold this person who's just getting life kicked out of them and to know that they love you back. Man, those are the, those are just like moments that are just indescribable because you can feel the Lord and you can feel that in some odd way and this evil thing happening, that there's something good. It reminds you that the lowest moments, the Lord is, is really willing to go there with you uh, and he's willing to sit in that with you so yeah after after we got back from Christmas um, she you know she got sick again and so we went back to all children's and um, her breathing just got worse and she ended up needing a breathing tube and we're kind of hit with reality again and it became pretty evident that um, she was getting tired and didn't want to fight anymore so the family came to town and 
and the friends and church members and we gathered around and uh, on a Sunday, the Lord's Day, and, and she uh, showed us that God is um, real and that God exists even at the doorstep of death and beyond. And we held her and we said goodbye and got to carry her to the finish line. Um, and then, you know, you, you lose her. So our first question that we asked was, where'd she go? And we believed and we have faith that as we said goodbye, uh, that Jesus did what we couldn't do and, uh, and picked her up and held her for us. She taught me so much about the gospel and about God's love for us. And, um, and I, I can say now that I wouldn't change anything because I don't, because I can see God's hand over the entire thing. Hope is the word that comes to my mind, a uh, hope, being able to sing the song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, mm -hmm. and knowing that the coming of Jesus is the, is the renewing and making whole of my family again. And even in the decision of letting Blakely go was us believing we are going to get to see her again and we're going to get to be with her again, and that he did already show up um, in space, time, and history in human form. There's such conflicting feelings. Um, we don't have Blakely here this Christmas and we're missing her, but you know, Trip reminds us of the promise and the hope um, that Jesus brings. And you know, the celebration of the life of Jesus, uh, because if, it, if none of this took place, uh, there would be no joy for us to have and hope for us to have. Uh, there would be no point in us to be able to share the story or want to talk about it uh, but because of this little boy born, uh, we get to have those experiences, hope and joy. And that is what Christmas has been for us this season, is a reminder of a promise uh, to come back and a promise to make this right. And what we've seen is that God keeps his promises.